Hello everybody, my name is John Hammond and I'm coming back at you on a YouTube video now showing off some of the Lassa CTF, which is currently running at least while I'm recording this. Um, I guess this is a capture the flag competition that I'm participating in by high schoolers, for high schoolers, myself being a college student, I guess it's not kind of directed towards me. Uh, regardless, it's a computer science competition run from Liberal Arts and Science Academy in Austin, Texas. Um, so it's just a regular CTF. Um, I just got started on some of the problems, so I figured I'd show off what I have solved so far, which I'm just going to make a video on the shifty letters, the challenge, which is uh, real simple, it's just uh, uh, Caesar Cipher. Kyle got his letters confused, help him out, and it gives you this prompt here, and we can see very clearly this is uh, insanely likely to be a flag because of those braces and underscores. So it looks like this is just a simple Caesar Cipher, we just have to shift it and figure out what it shifted by. Um, we could do this with an online tool, but since we have already written some code in a previous video, uh, we can go ahead and, and uh, use that. I am currently listening to a little bit of music right now. hope that's okay. I just actually turn it back on because right now I'm just kind of doing this on my own. So the code that I have is actually caesarcipher.py. I put it in my code folder. So I'm just going to fire that back up and see if I can... Uh, I'll get sublime text visible for you guys. I'll drag that down here. And I'll find that Caesar cipher script. The rotate function was just all that we had that would actually kind of do this for us. So what I normally do when I'm in the middle of a CTF, I will go ahead and save a file in where I normally save all the stuff that I work with for when it comes to competitions. I'll create a folder specifically for it, and then I would have a folder for each challenge. So I already have a shifty letters complete folder, but I guess for the purpose of demonstration, I'll just show this one to you. And I always name my scripts initially ape.py, <laughs> ape being that I throw stuff at stuff. <laughs> it just became a joke between uh, my friends and, and the team, the cyber team that I, that, I, that I play all these CTFs on and with. So let's get a Python script going. Let's import. Let's just paste in that rotate function, which pretty much does the Caesar, Caesar cipher for us. And well, I already wrote all that code in a previous video that I will try and link to. But it's pretty much just an easy Caesar, Caesar cipher in Python. So let's actually get that string that we need that is a challenge string anyway. And this is all code I've already written. I'm just kind of doing it again to make a demonstration and show you how to do it. So we can just call that the challenge string, and I'll actually put that down here. Okay, so what I would normally do is I would do a for i in length of... Actually, sorry, it should be range, because we want to get a number here, because that's what we're going to offset by. What we're going to try and do is brute force every single possibility of all the 26 letters or key offsets we can shift this uh, uh, the Caesar cipher by. So this is what I would normally do. I would just do for i in range, length of string that ASCII, uppercase or lowercase, whatever the case may be. It doesn't really matter in this case, since it's just going to be the alphabet. I'm doing this to loop through 0 to 26. I could have just put in range of 26, but I don't know, just for programmable, whatever the heck I just put this in. And then we'll just go ahead and print out the current offset that we're printing on by, and then rotate the string. Oh, I'm sorry. Rotate by the function name. Rotate by the challenge string by i. And if we run this, I'll make this pep8 appropriate. Whoa! If I run this, I can start to look through all of these. Blah, blah, blah. Look for English. And I see number 12... I see some English characters there. Rome may fall, but Cypher will remain. Take this flag in remembrance. So, it's because I know I got that to work, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put that in uh, brute force ciphers. And then I'll just kind of put all that in there. And since um, what I would normally do is just kind of comment out with the steps of what I've done and then kind of make more functions specifically to it. So show answer, or I guess get answer, since I'm not going to print it out. But I will now return what we've just found, because we've already got the flag at this point. I just want to make it so my script can get it that well. So I'll put a rotate challenge string, and then we know 12 is now the offset by. And then we would use another... I want to use a get flag function, just so it's good for us. I would run that get answer script that we just... Oh, I actually should return being visible and get answer. I'll return get answer, and I will split it by space character, so it doesn't really need any arguments, and I'll just get the last one of it, so I know that it's the very last part of the challenge script, the challenge prompts, 
string, which is just this flag here. So I'm returning that as the last word. And then all we do as the actual code, we can just print get flag and run that function. And now we get last of CTF be shifted no more. We actually got the flag for this, this CTF challenge. So I'd put that in and I'd submit it and I'd get my 10 points, whatever. And we're done. But just showing the steps of what I did, I would look for whatever key offset has English. And I do that with brute force cipher. And then get answer would get the full text. Get flag displays only the text. And then we're good. We submitted that flag, and we're good, and we're all done with that challenge. And simple Caesar cipher, but we'd already written the code for it, so all we have to do is uh, put it to use and actually get a flag for a CTF challenge. Now, normally I would just save this as a get flag.py, so I will know that it has actually done. And then in that folder that actually contains everything uh, that I'm using for the competition, uh, last of CTF. I would rename this folder to that challenge name underscore complete, just like I had over here. And you can see these are the stuff that I already did, and it's pretty much identical code. I just don't have my comments. I'm actually, I actually like this code better, and I'll save it over. But yeah, we're done. We just got that simple challenge, and that's how I did it. Uh, I hope to do more similar videos like this and to show you how I get other solutions to this CTF and future CTFs. But thanks for watching, guys. Hope to see you in the next tutorial.